Well, welcome to our Helping Black Business special. We called this meeting because we have both a significant challenge and we have even a more significant opportunity. I want to thank you for taking time to join us. I'd like you to post and share on whatever platform you have to ensure that others know that we're here. You know, one of my favorite expressions that I made up myself is the only thing worse than not having what you need is not using what you have. And I've learned that there's always something available that we should know about and don't know about. And that's my motivation for inviting you here tonight. Uh, we've been talking about uh, black business. We've been talking about the double pandemic of both COVID-19 and just being black. The post George Floyd and Breonna Taylor season has caused us to be even more sensitive and we've seen major corporations say and do things with regard to black life that they've never said or done before. And so tonight, uh, I'm hoping you'll have an opportunity to learn something and at the very least, meet two of my favorite people. These are two women that are intricately involved in corporate America in so many different ways, I don't have time to discuss it. Uh, these women are strategically positioned both in their local communities and in corporate America, and they have uh, access to resources beyond their perspective and their philosophy and their ideology and their opinions. They literally control resources that I believe our people should know about and take advantage of. So let me introduce from EY, formerly known as Ernst & Young, formerly known as an accounting company, one of the big four, but now they do all things strategic and planning and consulting and everything. Uh, Miss Jackie Taylor and Miss Tasha Youngblood Brown, uh, two dear friends of mine and people that all of you really want to know. Jackie and Tasha, uh, thank you for joining me tonight. Thanks for having us. This is yes, great. Thank you so much. So let's begin by talking about the state of African American and Latin X businesses. We know on a macro level that more jobs every year are formed by small businesses than corporate America. And we know that small businesses are really the engine that drive the American economy. And we also know that blacks and Latin X entrepreneurs have unique challenges. All small businesses have challenges. Uh, one, one study says that if you start a business and you make it past seven years, then you've defied the odds and most small businesses don't make it long. But if you're black and Latinx, you've got challenges that are unique to us, uh, challenges that relate to access to capital, challenges that relate to uh, interest rates and insurance and credit. And so why, why don't you talk about your work at EY and the perspective it gives you on, on black owned and Latinx owned businesses today? Sure, and, and Dr. Soros, you're absolutely right. Um, even prior to the pandemic, our Black and Latin-owned businesses had a, a myriad of issues um, staying in business. Um, liquidity, um, access to lines of credit so that you can kind of uh, support yourself right, doing, during hard times, and exposure, quite frankly, and the relationships that they need to, to grow and to scale. And as a result of the pandemic, that hadn't changed, except it's gotten worse, right? right. It hasn't gotten any better. And so at EY, we recognized that there were disparities even prior to COVID that were completely exacerbated, turned on its head um, after COVID. And so as part of our organization's anti-racism initiative, we're trying to get to the root of some economic issues that are in our community. And one of those items is capacitizing our Black and Latinx businesses. So we created this program to, to address that. Well, capacity is a critical word. Uh, you can have great dreams, great ideas, great products, but lack capacity to have an ongoing business. And of course, cash flow, access to capital for business development uh, helps address the issue of capacity. But capacity is more than money. You talked about relationships. Tasha, yeah, what yeah. I like about your vision is that you are doing more than throwing money to businesses. I've seen a hundred uh, announcements about companies that will write a check if you're black, give you $5,000, and then they go away. 
this initiative that you have constructed seems to go much deeper than that. So explain explain where you're going, really. Sure. So so absolutely. I think, you know, in our business, we're in the people business, right? So um, aside from COVID, we think that this opportunity and the initiatives that we have across the firm brings an opportunity for us to help Latin Latinx businesses and Black businesses help themselves. So what does that mean? We have invested in putting our not only our best and brightest people, but also our resources and the services that we bring to the table across everything from financial services to business process to technology to to tech to so many things. Um, what what COVID has done for our community um, specifically, it has exposed holes, right? Gaps that a lot of businesses have, and it has almost crippled a lot of the businesses in our community. So what I appreciate about the firm, because it's not, it's more than just um, seizing an opportunity, right, to drive business, mm -hmm. but it's also been about what, what are those drivers that will help us build back our economy, right? And how swiftly can we rebound from what's happening across every sector? Um, and the fact that we're focusing on Black, Black and Latinx businesses is critical, right? Because this whole time that we have, our opportunity of the day is to focus on a community that so many have been afraid to do. So, um, I mean, you know, Jackie and I have both been with the firm for a while. We work with many different companies, but, but what we're doing right now in this moment is probably the most important thing that we can do. So that's probably why we're all in right now. Well, first of all, I owe both of you an apology because when I distributed information to Mark, even when I invited people to this session, I, I only said help for black businesses. And, and I did that not out of ignorance, but I did that knowing that my experience is such that when we go broader than black, somehow black people miss the message. And somehow, even if it was black, when it's black and what we used to call Hispanic or minority, or diversity or inclusion, somehow, if we don't say the word black, black people somehow seem to miss this. It started in my life when I was in high school, where uh, the black students and the white students went to the same school. And it required that you had to register to vote in student government elections. I ran for student government president, and I lost the election because none of my black friends knew they had to be registered. And so I couldn't figure out how could we all be in the same exact building and black people don't know what white people know. And that's when we formed one of the first black student unions in America to make sure black people in our high school knew what white people knew. So I, I want to apologize to my Latin ex brothers and sisters. I didn't try to exclude you, but I just want to make sure that black people, that African-Americans get this message. Um, I, I, but before you go into more details, let's be clear. Um, why does EY even care? So w one of our biggest mantras, and it's truly part of our DNA, it's not just um, you know lip service, is building a better working world. But we also realize that the working world is an ecosystem. It doesn't just consider consist of big business clients that we may have. It's the communities they live in. It's the lifeblood, as you mentioned earlier, the small businesses, which are the lifeblood of all of our communities. And it's the right thing to do. And I think the big guiding principle behind this is when we look at a huge social issue, um, the social issues that we're facing, we are breaking those apart piece by piece to figure out how we can use our size, our, our breadth and our platform to make a difference. It's what our employees want. It's the life, it's part of our DNA. And so we thought it was important to focus on an area of need where there's huge disparity, which is with our black and Latinx businesses to answer that question that we probably all heard. You know, you have a black or Latinx business owner and they'll often say, if I only had. Mm -hmm. So the answer to the question, if I only had, is in this program because we have literally procured in and consolidated services that we generally reserved for our top tier clients now made available to black and Latinx business owners. So I'm excited about it and I hope that our community is excited about it too. So let's get down to the details. I, I'm black. I own a couple of businesses and I'm I'm about to hear you invite me to apply to your firm to be a part of some it 
And what what is the it called again? So it is the Entrepreneur Access Network, or referred okay. to as EAN. This is the inaugural year and the first cohort. Okay, so now I'm black, and because I'm black, and if I were Latinx, I, I would be equally eligible to apply. I'm applying to something called EAN, and what's in it for me exactly? What will I get access to that I otherwise wouldn't have access to if I didn't apply? Absolutely. So you're Black or Latinx founder, and you uh, go online to ey.com slash EAN, and you apply for this program. We'll select a cohort of, of business owners to be part of a curated program. So when you're part of this program, you will get an assessment, and you will get a customized curated training program, live learning just for you. It includes live instruction, everything you need to know as a business owner to scale and to grow. It includes relationships. So there will be events, initially uh, virtual, but ongoing. There will be events to introduce you to the who's who in the state of New Jersey for those in the state. Now, I will say this is a national program, though we're focused on New Jersey. It is a national program. So for those on the web that hear about this, you meet the criteria, mm -hmm. absolutely apply. But to your point, we're going to focus today on kind of what the New Jersey experience would look like. Okay, so you talked about curating. You know, you use words that I think <laughs> he teases uh, you about this all the time. Uh, he does. He does. You, know, you, you use these words that do require translation. That's why I'm in your life. I am your <laughs> translator. You use I these words her, like curate. <laughs> um, so I've applied now, but but I, I missed something here because it sounds like this is really for a small group of people. I'm not sure all this curating can be widely distributed. But earlier you told me that there's something for anybody who applies. Let's start there and then we'll get back to the curation. Fair enough. So you apply to the program and although there will be a group that's selected, anyone who applies to the program will have access to the learning materials. We call it, you know, 24-7 um, on-demand information. So as soon as you apply, you will get, cut, you know, direct permission to access to these on-demand learning available to you as a business. Like what subjects? On-demand learning about what? Sure, everything from um, how to improve your business credit, how to establish business credit separate and apart from your personal credit, um, how yeah. to access uh, funds, whether that's venture capitalist funds, angel investors, or through, through programs, um, how to train your team. So the difference between a business and a sole proprietor is, 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 is you know, part of this program so that you can figure out how to scale, how to train your head of HR, your head of IT, or the person you have doing that, how to build out that team if you don't and have That's to. what she wants for me, Tasha. She's, she's, she's emphasizing that because yeah. that, that's what she wants me. She wants me in that section. Right, right. I mean, right. you know, you're, you're a one-man show most of the time. I mean, you yeah. got an army behind you, but you, you know, you got a lot of irons in the fire, so I understand that. This trains the army, exactly. Right. So, I get that. I, are these booklets to read, on-demand videos? What 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 is this um, content? What format does it come in? So it's high. Okay, I won't. So it's two types, right? So one type is the live learning. So you'll be a part and invited to live events where you can right. learn, interactive, ask questions from CEOs, some of our EOI winners, and things like that. The other. Um, uh, piece of it is there are some what we call pre-recorded learning that you can do at the comfort, especially for those business owners that own restaurants and say, I don't have time, right. make time, because this is available 24-7 to build your business and help you grow. So to access this 24-7 content, all I need to do is apply and be That's black right. and be black or Latinx. Now, how, how you know that? identify if you yeah you self-identify when you apply yeah we verify that through the process okay and I, and I and i also wanted to add to that um you know there's a lot of businesses of course they know how to run their business and that's it right by by the grace of god by luck by hard work they're successful but this assessment part that jackie mentioned is important because sometimes we don't know what we don't know right, right. what does scale look like what does growth look like so that's one of the first things that we that we talk about. I know a lot of successful business people, and literally, if they can, if they can, if they can just keep that bottom line and stay in the black. I heard you talk about that on on your sermon this morning, Pastor. If right. they can stay in the black, stay they, in the they're black. happy just to do that. But but there's more, right? And a lot of times it starts with that access and that opportunity. I also want to add that 
you know, the program is for everyone, right? Uh, New Jersey has a deep, deep, um, you know, rich uh, economic environment of the mom and pops, right? That yeah. fuel us is all the way up to, you know, 100, 300 million dollar businesses. This, this program, this is what's unique about it. It's for everyone, right? There's a space for everyone. We do have two different categories, this, this emerging category. So it's up to $5 million of revenue. And then this established category, which is beyond 5 million. Why 5 million? It's, it's a decent marker. We know, that, we know the game changes when you hit, you know, double digits and triple digits, but the program will be customized and it feels different. So I wanna make sure that people find themselves in this opportunity the same way you're talking about now, Pastor. Yeah, That's yeah. a great point, Dr. Stories. I just wanna- It is, it is. Yeah, one, one of the things that, um, the questions that comes up often is, will I get access to capital? And I think this helps us emphasize more the capacity building. We absolutely have a person in our America's office who is leading the funding component to find funding opportunities for these small businesses. But what will make them attractive to these potential investors is the, the confidence that they've gone through this program supported by EY. So we want business owners that are also looking to make the commitment to the learning, to the relationship building and everything that, that Tasha just laid out and that will package them to even make them more attractive to potential funding sources going forward. Yeah, you know, I have learned that in addition to access to investment capital and exist and access to debt, I have learned that there are other very effective ways to finance a business that that where you keep 100% ownership and you owe no one anything. And, and so a part of this learning I think is understanding the pitfalls of borrowing and the challenges of attracting investors. You know, a lot of times we are aggressive, but we're aggressively pursuing the wrong goal. And so investment capital is, is not always what it's cranked up to be. And I think programs like these help us distinguish between what we need and what we want. The reason I wanted you here tonight really was because my, my personal commitment to God and to myself and to my community is every time I see something of value for me, I just try to spread the word. And I know that this is highly competitive on, on, on uh, one level, but I also know that you're making resources so widely available that everybody should know about it. Uh, I plan to apply for this the minute I heard about it. Now, let's talk about this small group uh, where you're really going to zoom in and have a kind of hyper attention on them. Talk about that second group. Sure. Tasha, you want to talk about the experience once they've been selected? Sure. So, um, you know, in addition to content, you know, I don't want entrepreneurs to feel like they're going to apply and we're going to put you back through, you know, 13th grade, right? It's not so much that it's, uh, you know, education is important, access is important, capital is important. Um, relationships are important, alliances, um, advocates for small business are important. But the, the part that I think will really be key, and I'm, I'm really fortunate to kind of be shaping this for New Jersey, is we will align every business with, a, um, with an advisor, right? So this is a particular person with an expertise aligned to going back to what that gap might be, right, for your business. They, they are a professional within our firm. They have the connections across industry, right? We work with all the biggest brands in the world. So, I, you know, don't need a name drop, but whatever. Look on your counter, look in your kitchen, look in your house. They're probably a client of ours. And so these people are putting their um, relationship capital as well as their time on the line to work directly with these entrepreneurs. It is a, it, this is a year long program, right? So this person, at a minimum, we'll be connecting with these entrepreneurs on a monthly basis, right? Non-negotiable, right? And we would hope that you, you know, cell phones, emails, you know, short people need to be connected at the hip. Right. So that um, they're guiding you and so you need. For our end, these individuals will tap, will be tapping into the firm and all the access that's available. Um, there. So, so that's that one connection piece. And as the program evolves, you'll get access to other programs that we have within our firm. We have um, our Entrepreneur of the Year Network 
this program has been in existence for 35 plus years. Some of the top companies have gone on to, to greatness by being involved in this funnel. We'll give you access to that. We also have a program called the Strategic Growth Forum, where again, a similar competition that escalates from a national level to a global level, people involved will get a complimentary introduction to that firm as well. So the point is resource access and expertise in, in every, in every. Absolutely. Yeah. You can't overstate the value of being in the right place, having Steve, access to the right people uh, at the right time, being in the room with people who you otherwise would never meet. That, that takes, that takes net, networking to a whole different level. You know, networking, traditional networking assumes that you, you kind of cut in on your own, but this kind of uh, facilitation and this kind of EY offering itself as Catalyst, that, that's a whole different level of access and commitment. I appreciate that. Um, suppose someone is thinking about starting a business. They've been displaced from their jobs. They don't think their job is coming back. Uh, is this the kind of program for people who are considering starting a business or is this for people that are already in business? Right. So for the program itself, for that experience that Tasha just explained, um, that requires at least two years in business. So you can have revenues from a dollar to five million and you'd be emerging. And then upwards of that, you'd be in the established. However, we encourage all Latinx and black business owners to apply because if you don't meet that criteria, you're at the concept stage, you're early, early on, you can take advantage of the on-demand program. So you'll get access to startup basics, um, uh, local New Jersey uh, small business resources that can be available to help you mature. And then we hope that you'll get to the point where going forward, you'll meet the eligibility and you'll apply for a cohort going forward. Well, you know, I, I appreciate all of the thought and effort that's going into this. I've been around long enough to know that just because you're a black executive in a major, uh, basically white corporation, doesn't mean that you're there looking out for the interests of black people. And, and it's not to condemn people. The pressures of being black in a majority corporation, the pressures of meeting your numbers, the pressures of having good evaluations, those pressures are sometimes so intense that it really undermines your ability to look beyond your own job and your own survival. But both of you, for me, have been exemplary in your willingness to take a chance on stretching out beyond your job description, participating in advocacy activities inside the firm and helping to, to shape these kinds of initiatives. And I, I am, I respect both of you uh, highly and, and I'm hoping more people will get to know who you are and so that they can identify this kind of behavior in other companies. So how do I apply and what's the deadline? Sure. So the deadline has been extended to allow this opportunity for more people to October 14th. Um, apply, you merely need to go to www.ey.com slash EAN and the application, uh, frequently asked questions, all the information you'll need it will be there. I will add, um, based on some feedback that I've gotten, that the application is fairly simple. Um, the information that you need to complete the application as a business owner, you generally already have. So if you just, you know, section some time off to answer the questions about why you think this program would be appropriate for you and help you grow your business and so forth, um, it's pretty straightforward and easy to complete. Well, listen, I'm, I'm proud of both of you. I appreciate your outreach and the extra effort you put into making sure our people really know about this. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping and praying that we will attract the attention of all the right people because again, the only thing worse than not having what we need is not using what we have. And we often uh, feel and behave so much like victims that we miss opportunities like these. So thank you so much. Are there any closing words that you want people to take away? Uh, one thing you ought to say, Tasha, is how you got that beautiful background uh, because I've, I've never seen a background that's that dignified. <laughs> I've seen beaches, I've seen planets, but I've never, I've never seen that. But is there, is there a closing word that you'd like to say to leave our uh, audience with? For me, I, I would just say that, you know, going back to the opportunity statement there, 
apply. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. And at a minimum, because it's a cyclical and an annual program, you'll kind of be in our system. Um, and I would also volunteer, um, you know, we'll put our information in the live to reach out if you have any problems, any issues along the way. But I'm always one that, you know, I'm not really one to sit back and complain. And I'm also one to, to, to jump on really every good opportunity that makes sense. And this is one that is exactly that and will enrich the, the economy in our state. So apply, nothing to lose. Well, tell your husband I said hello. Uh, I Tasha, will. Tasha's husband was one of my students when I taught at <laughs> Kane University and probably my best student. He has done oh, so much. Good. He has. He oh has my gosh. Saved. He was. to roll him out the house now. Oh, I couldn't yeah. get out the house he, with that big head. <laughs> he was an outstanding student. We were there during some difficult days and uh, I've watched his career and I just hope. He thinks he learned something from me that contributed to his many successes. Yeah. He absolutely does. I will, I will let him know. Well, Ava Brown was a real star. Jackie, any final words? No, just that, you know, we, we the firm surveyed the landscape of where the need was. And um, our professionals and partners said, this is where we need to do it. So we're really pushing this and we're making a huge investment. We said that if these small businesses had the advisory and consulting that these big companies had, they would catapult. So I am just, because we got behind it, help us to make sure that, you know, that we look good and that the numbers, oh, yeah. that that's where the need was. So appreciate, even if you are not a small business that is ready for this program, although you should all apply, you know, think and think and leverage your network to identify at least one business that you share this opportunity with. That's right. Whatever small uh, business that you um, patronize, if you take your clothes to a black owned cleaners, if you eat in a, in, in a Latinx owned restaurant, if you, whatever, just, just spread the word. That's why we're doing this. Spread the word. We now have an extra two weeks. The deadline was the end of this month. They pushed the deadline back, at least here in New Jersey. And uh, we want to make sure that the Black Chamber of Commerce, NAACP, Puerto Rican Action Board, and all of our churches, we've got in New Jersey, we've got at least 800 black churches, every church should be spreading the word. I sent a letter to my members today, letting them know to not only participate, but spread the word. And we're hoping to get that done. So thank you so much, uh, you. Ms. Jackie Taylor, Tasha Youngblood Brown. And I look forward to working with you on some level. All right. Thank you, Dr. Sorris. Thank, thank you. you so much.